Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel of TSP Electronics. This is IZ0ABD and I want to show you how to add an interface in order to have a big giant screen pan adapter for your radio. It means that you can see on the screen the waterfall, the spectrum and also you can have also an SDR reception. Many of you ask me instruction and details how to add this interface to any radio and if you go on the website of my company TSP you can see that there's a page of the product iFace and if you read all the page you can see many details about how to install, how it works, the point where you have to connect the interface to and many other information. But one of the most important information you can have from this page is that iFace works with all the radios. It means that you can add this interface to any radio. If you make a click on this sentence, you can go to this page and here you can find the instruction to install the iFace. Just an example, I can show you the instruction for the TS950S. It's very easy to add an IF buffer interface to any radio and we will use the instruction for the TS950 as an example. But you have just to remember that these instructions are valid for any radio. It's very easy to add an IF buffer interface to any radio. And the instructions you are going to see are valid for any radio. First you have to understand the connectors on the iFace board. The PTT that can be used on this IF buffer interface can be active high or active low. It means that when you push the PTT button on the microphone, you can bring a signal going high or going low during transmission. Then you have to bring a signal from the mixer. Generally, we use the first mixer of your radio and you have to take the signal between the mixer and the passband filter at the output of the mixer. Then you have to bring 12 volt yeah, then you have to bring 12 volts to power the board, but, it, but this board accepts a signal for... Then you have to bring a 12 volt to power the board, but this board accepts a voltage from 8 to 16 volts. Last but not least is the output of the board and it is represented by the signal output, IF signal output. It means that signal that goes to, a, to the external SDR pan adapter. So to add this interface to any radio and in particular to the TS950, you have to follow always, always, always this procedure. First, you have to find the service manual for your radio. Go on the web, go on Google, wherever you want, and search for service manual of your radio. When you have found the service manual of your radio, you have to find the block diagram of your radio. The block diagram of your radio shows you the signal paths. As you can see from this image, the signal path is divided between the TX and RX path and we are interested in RX only because we want a pan adapter during reception. As you can see here we have the first mixer of the radio and we will put a sampling point after the first mixer but before the passband filter. This is also called roofing filter. Then you can see there are many other mixers, but we are not interested in this one because only here, only here, we can have a wideband signal and we want a very nice panoramic adapter on our radio. We don't want a very narrow pan adapter. And if you sample, for example, the signal here at 455 kHz, you will have a very narrow pan adapter generally around 15 kilohertz so it's not so wide but here you can have a pan adapter of 100 or 200 kilohertz or even more depending on the external sdr receiver you are going to use going back to the instruction here you can find a more detailed version of the block diagram and here we can understand which are the transistor involved in the mixer in this radio, the transistors are labeled like Q13, 14, 15 and 16. So these are the transistors we have to look for on the schematic diagram of this radio. And here we have the schematic diagram where we can find the first mixer, you see, main first mixer, Q13, 14, 
15 and 16 and here at the output we have a transformer and this is the IF sampling point we are interested in. So we will have to sample the IF in between the L87 and the CN7 connector. This is the connector that brings the IF signal to another board. Also from the schematic we can understand where to solder a wire to power our buffer interface. Pin 6 of connector W4 brings 15 volts, so this is a very good point where we have to connect a wire. Back again to the instruction. We are going to the end of the procedure and we have to locate where to solder the wires on the board, on the PCB. We have seen that the schematic diagram of the RF unit gives us information of the IF sampling point and we have now to locate this point, the IF sampling point on the board. As you can see, we have CN7 and L87 inductor and in this part of the board we can solder a wire to the IF buffer interface. Also the connector W4, as we have seen previously, on pin 6 gives us the power to supply our board. Last but not least, we can see a more detailed version of the previous image and here we have the connector CN7 and IF sampling point is between the connector and L87 inductor or transformer. The power supply can be simply soldered very close to this connector. On the pin number 6, these are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. So for example you can solder a wire at this point. It's very very easy and this procedure can be repeated for any other radio. Last but not least. Here is specified that the use of PTT signal is not required because the signal path for the RX and the TX are separate, so we don't need to isolate the receiver during the transmission. In case a radio shares some part of the circuitry between the RX and the TX section, probably you will need to use the PTT signal to isolate your SDR pan adapter during the transmission and you simply have to bring a PTT signal to the input of our iPhase. Just remember, active I means that the signal goes high during the transmission, active low goes low during the transmission. So you have to bring a 5 to 10, 12 volt or 0 volt during the transmission. If your radio is not already listed here in this page, simply just send us an email or simply use the contact us form you can find on the page, on the main page, and we will provide you the information as soon as possible. I hope this will help you to understand how to add a panoramic adapter to any radio. The procedure is always the same. Take the service manual, find the block diagram, find inside the block diagram the part of the circuitry where you can find the mixer, Find the component used on the mixer and look on the schematic diagram which is the best point where you have to solder a wire to bring the IF signal to the IF buffer interface. After that locate this point on the board, on the PCB and solder this device. Nothing more, it's very easy. When you have the instruction, the installation is a task that requires around 5 minutes, no more. I'm sure this was useful. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Vimeo and also Telegram. <music>